In my last video, I benchmarked this five-year-old PC build I put together for $800 in 2019. And in this video, I'm going to benchmark this $800 gaming PC that I built less than a year ago and compare the two systems. The older PC features a Ryzen 5 2600 processor and an RX 5700 GPU. The newer build comes with a Ryzen 5 5600X processor and an RX 6750XT GPU. So that's a two generation leap on the CPU at the same CPU tier and just a single generation leap on the GPU, but also a GPU tier up as well. I benchmarked both systems at 1080p and 1440p resolution in seven different games. In Baldur's Gate 3 at 1440p resolution, Right out of the gate, you can see the substantial difference between these two systems. It's not that the five-year-old system was bad either. The combination of the Ryzen 5 2600 and RX 5700 delivering nearly 60 frames per second at the Ultra preset in Baldur's Gate 3 at 1440p resolution is much better than I would have expected. But the 5600X and 6750XT blow it out of the water, delivering an average frame rate of nearly 90 frames per second. At 1080p resolution, the results are similar, with the newer system delivering about a 70% boost in average frame rate over the five-year-old system. In Black Myth Wukong at 1440p resolution, neither system were able to handle the game at the cinematic preset, with the older system averaging 26 frames per second and the newer build averaging only 34 frames per second. The newer system could maintain an over 60 frame per second average utilizing frame gen though, and at the high preset, the newer system delivered a comfortable 70 frames per second average in the difficult to run title, whereas the older system averaged just 53 frames per second. Neither system were able to run Wukong at the cinematic preset at 1080p resolution as well, with the newer build averaging only 38 frames per second and the older system averaging just 29 frames per second. However, both systems perform much better utilizing frame gen on the cinematic preset, and at the high preset, the older system was able to average over 60 frames per second and the newer system was able to get over 80 frames per second. In Cyberpunk 2077, I tested the ultra high and medium presets. I left out ray tracing settings because the game wouldn't allow the older system to turn those settings on. At 1440p resolution at the ultra preset, the older system averaged just 49 frames per second and the newer build averaged 74 frames per second. At the high and medium preset, the older build did much better, achieving average frame rates of 67 and 82 frames per second respectively and the newer build was able to hit an over 100 frame per second average at both the high and medium presets. At 1080p resolution, the older build averaged a very respectable 73 frame per second average at the ultra preset, and the newer build handled the game very easily, averaging 115 frames per second on the ultra preset. In Metro Exodus at 1440p resolution, neither system could achieve a playable frame rate at the extreme preset, with the older build averaging just 28 frames per second, and the newer build averaging just below 40 frames per second. Both systems could handle the high preset well enough though, with the older build achieving a 60 frame per second average and the older build averaging close to 90 frames per second. At 1080p resolution, you could conceivably play Metro Exodus on the extreme preset on the newer build where it averaged 51 frames per second. However, both systems were able to provide a more comfortable experience by just dropping it down to the high preset. In Starfield at 1440p resolution, the older system struggled to run the game without the aid of frame generation, averaging just 41 frames per second at the Ultra preset, compared to the newer system's 57 frame per second average. With frame generation turned on, the newer system was able to run the game at an average frame rate of about 100 frames per second. The newer build was also able to achieve a solid 78 frame per second average at the medium preset. At 1080p resolution, once again, the older system couldn't hit a 60 frame per second average without frame generation turned on, averaging just 48 frames per second at the Ultra preset. The newer build did much better, averaging 67 frames per second at the Ultra preset. With frame generation turned on, the older build was able to deliver a comfortable 86 frames per second average, and the newer system had an average frame rate of 115 frames per second. Fortnite and Marvel Rivals are difficult to benchmark as there's no way to control what happens in the game, so I don't have benchmark charts for these two games. But I can show you gameplay footage from both games with the MSI Afterburner overlay. In Marvel Rivals at 1440p resolution, the newer system was able to deliver an average frame rate of over 60 frames per second, whereas the older system could barely hit 30 frames per second. However, as this is a competitive title, there's really no reason to play this game at maxed out graphics settings. Turning the settings down to the low preset and changing the FSR setting from quality to performance, the older system stayed around the 90 frame per second mark and the newer system averaged around 120 frames per second. 
At 1080p resolution, the newer system ran the game at the Ultra preset fairly well, seen in the mid-80s for the average frame rate. The older system couldn't handle the Ultra preset though, even at the lower resolution, playing in the low 40s for frames per second. Dropping down to the low preset with the FSR setting changed to performance, the older system played closer to the 100 frame per second mark, and the newer build averaged around 140 frames per second. Moving to Fortnite at 1440p resolution, neither system were able to handle the game well at the Epic preset at native resolution, with the older system hovering around the mid-20s for average frame rate, and the newer system playing in the mid-30s. Using performance settings though, the older system was able to deliver close to a 140 frame per second average at 1440p resolution, and the newer system delivered a nearly 290 frame per second average. At 1080p resolution, once again, neither system ran the Epic preset very well, with the older build playing at a frame rate in the mid 30s, and the newer system playing in the mid 50s. Dropping down to performance settings though, and the older build played around 140 frames per second, and the newer build played at close to 300 frames per second. All right, as we concluded in our last video, the older build with the Ryzen 5 2600 and RX 5700 is still good enough to play games as long as you turn some settings down. The newer build with the 5600X and RX 6750 XT is obviously far more powerful, playing some of today's most popular titles very well even at higher settings at 1440p resolution. In my next video, I'm going to swap out the RX 6750 XT I used in the newer system with an NVIDIA RTX 4060. When I purchased the parts for this newer system, my GPU choices were either the 6750 XT or the RTX 4060, as both were around $300. So I want to see if I made the right choice choosing the 6750 XT over the RTX 4060.